In this video, I'll demonstrate a quick layout pattern that was once challenging to implement, uh, but has now become much easier thanks to CSS subgrid. Okay, so here's the layout I'm talking about. Notice how we have inputs and the sign up button on the same line. And they stay on the same line regardless of the length of the labels. Now to explain why it was challenging to build, let's actually build it together. So you'll see for yourself. So usually when I'm working with components like this, I like to abstract the form control as a single unit. And form control usually includes a label, an input, and potentially a help text or an error message. So when a user submits the form with an incorrect email, for example, we would see a message underneath the input saying the email isn't incorrect and you would style them separately so you can reuse these components in other forms so in our case this is a newsletter form but it could be any other now the newsletter form itself is a separate BEM entity it controls the way the the background of the form looks it controls how form controls are positioned inside and the positioning of form controls should never be put inside the form control um, block because they will mess up the reusability. So I think that's clear. Okay, so since this is a tutorial about CSS subgrid and grid, I have already created styles for the rest of the page, including inputs, buttons, and everything else. So we'll focus exclusively on layouts and positioning items inside. And we start with mobile styles first. And I think you always should start with mobile first because that's the majority of the traffic. Okay, so let's start with display grid. Now we need to define columns and we'll have just one. And if you're wondering why I just wrote min max zero one FR instead of one FR, I'll link a video where I explain in details why this is a preferred way of defining columns in CSS grid. Okay, now we just need to define row gap and I'll use the same variable here. This variable just holds the value for the spacing. Okay, this looks great. Now let's create styles for the desktop because this is not the layout that we initially wanted to create. And I think I'll actually make it a little smaller. Now we just need to add a media query and define columns for larger viewports. Now I'll copy this and we'll do repeat or min max zero one fr and let, let's see what happens perfect almost what i want except for there's no space between the elements so let's add column gap and we'll have the same value there and this is actually a little distraction from the theme of the video but this is a perfect use case for using the default behavior of fraction units see how each column is the same width but we don't want the last column to be the same width we just want it to be as wide as the button right like this this seems uh, unnecessary so instead of doing instead of doing repeat 4 min max 0 1 fr i'll do repeat 3 and then i'll add auto and if I update it to something else, it will still work. So if I change it to, let's say, sign up, please, to make it longer, the entire layout still works. Now there's only one problem. The button is not aligned with inputs. So we can fix that by adding align items end. And that should fix it. Perfect. And it all works fine until you need to add a help text to your form controls. And now the entire form looks broken because not all of the form controls have help text. And since all of them are shifted down, they're not aligned anymore. Thankfully, it's very easy to fix with CSS subgrid. Basically, what we want to do is define a grid with four columns that we already have and three rows. And the first row will be for labels. Second row will be for input and submit button. And the third row will be reserved for the help text and any error messages or whatnot. So let's go back to CodePen and let's define the rows first. And all I need is three auto rows. So I'm just going to copy this 
this will break the layout. So if I enable grid visualizer, you'll notice that each form control sits inside the first row and the second and the third rows are empty. So that's where we need CSS subgrid. I want to maintain the reusability of form control block, so I'm not going to touch it. And if you remember the markup, the form control is at the same time a newsletter form item. So I'm going to take this class and define a grid inside it. So we'll say display grid. I will copy the same column structure as in newsletter form. We basically just need one column for each form control. And for the rows, I just need to say grid template rows subgrid. And let's see what happens. And it doesn't work because we first need to make sure that each newsletter form item takes the space of all three rows. So let's go back to code pen. And we do that by saying grid row span three. So basically this declaration defines the behavior of the cell. And these three declarations define the behavior of the cell as a grid. Now it's almost what I want except for three things. I see that the submit button is in the first row, where it should be in the second row. The gaps between the rows are too big. And I see some extra spacing. And that extra spacing comes from the form control styles, which we'll fix. So let's fix the button first. To put the button in the second row, we need to target the last newsletter form item. We can do it by doing exactly that. but. That's not a very robust solution because if anything in the DOM moves, those styles will stop working. So I think I'll just add another class to newsletter form item here to target that. So we'll do something like this. So now that we have the class, I can do something like I actually add type submit to be more specific. And then I do grid row and I'll put it on the row number two. And I can see that the button is in the second row. Let's address the gaps now. And that is easy to do. We say row gap at the same value we have inside form control for spacing. Now, this is almost exactly what I was trying to achieve, except for there are still margins that come from the form control block that we defined previously. And like I said before, I don't want to touch it because this is a very common pattern for other forms. We can take form control and reuse it in other forms. So I don't want to change those styles and I'll keep those margins inside. Instead, I will remove them using newsletter form item element that comes from newsletter form component. And let's add another rule here, basically resetting those margins. So let's save it now. And now we can see that that's exactly what we were trying to achieve. And what's really cool about this approach is that we don't care how long the labels are. If I put the entire lorem ipsum inside, the, inside one of the labels, it will not break the layout, right? And we can even fix this positioning so that the labels always stick to the inputs. Let's actually do that. We just need to add the same rule here. Perfect. And I think approaching every layout like this is very important because you don't know how like this could be a user controlled input. They can input any label they want or the help text could be user controlled. Or if you use this uh, form in different languages, we don't know how first and last name uh, is written in, I don't know. I think that's a pretty cool example of using subgrid. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments. And I also link another video for aligning things in different columns using a different technique. So if you're interested in that, feel free to watch that. And I will see you in the next one.